Shalom and Shalom brothers. I'm making this video because I made a mistake in a John the Sixth um, a Portugal video. Now we're going to read this comment and I'm going to show you what I'm on about. So it reads, why did you not include the full quote at the end? You included the part where Professor Maria Mitchell says she would have imagined Don Pedro to be dark and suave man, to be a dark and suave man, but left out the actual description when she finds out he wasn't upon meeting him. Also, Don Pedro II was the grandson of John VI of Portugal, not his son. Now, this is where I made the mistake because I didn't read the full text as I usually do. And you see, the one time I didn't read the full text is the one time I made the mistake. I also got mixed up between Don Pedro I and Don Pedro II. Now, brothers, this is either a Blake Griffin situation or this is the Caucasian usurping the rulership of black people. Now I'm going to show you what I'm on about, so keep in mind what I just said. This is a Blake Griffin situation, or this is the Caucasian usurping the rulership of so-called black people. So remember what I just stated. But first, we're going to read the full thing as I should have done from the beginning, so I would have made that mistake and got confused. So it reads, attracted by the astronomical observatory and surprised professor Professor Maria Mitchell by his appearance as well as by his familiarity with the instruments. She wrote in a journal, I had imagined the Emperor of Brazil to be a dark, suave, tall man about 45 years, about 45 years, that he would not really have a crown upon his head, but that I should feel it was somewhat around handy like, and that I should that I should know that I was in royal presence. The white haired blue-eyed Dom Pedro, so keep that in mind, who she guessed to be about 65, 14 years older than he was, um, proved to have such a very pleasant, even chatty manner that she apparently forgot at the, at the time that he had ever swayed a scepter. She was astonished at his inquiry whether Alvin Clark had made the glass of the equadro of the Equadro, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, he seemed much more interested in the observatory than I could possibly expect. She had wrote, I had asked him to go on top of the roof and he said that he had no time, yet he stayed long enough to go up several times. By June 20, the Brazilians were back in Philadelphia at the Continental Hotel. Don Pedro had traveled about 9,000 miles since he had landed in New York. When he goes home, remarked one editor, he will know more about the United States than two-thirds of the members of Congress. The North American had said of him two months before, no rule anywhere, no ruler anywhere has a, ru has a ruler or as a man ever deserved so well from the United States as Pedro the Second. Now you see that's where I got confused between Pedro the First and Pedro the Second. This is why I should have read the whole thing. So this is my mistake. This one's on me. But brothers, remember what I stated, this is either a Blake Griffin situation or this is the Caucasians usurping the authority of the black rulership. So brothers, this is the image that I have of Don Pedro II. Now on the left is him in his younger years and as you can see he's a blonde haired, blue eyed, pale faced man. And on the right is him much older with white hair and blue eyes like we just read. So, but you might be asking, asking yourself a question, how can this be the grandson of John VI of Portugal when we know that John VI of Portugal was a dark skinned man? So this is where I stated, this is either where the Caucasian usurped the rulership, rulership of so-called black people, because we all know that so-called black people started to lose their rulership rapidly in the 1800s, the mid 1800s. And we're going to find out also what time period this dude, this dude ruled. Not only that, this could also be a Blake Griffin situation. So we're going to tackle the Blake Griffin situation real quick. So as I'm sure a lot of you brothers already know, this is the father of Blake Griffin. And as you can see, he is a dark skinned man. Now I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's Haitian. Now you brothers can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But once again, as you can see, he's a dark skinned man. Blake Griffin's father. And as you already know, this is Blake Griffin. 
Now, of course, Blake Griffin's mother was a Caucasian, but even from uh, when a black person and a white person uh, mate and they create an offspring, the child usually comes out like a mid-brown complexion. But as you can tell, Blake Griffin came out way lighter than your average quote-unquote mixed couple. Now, Blake Griffin reproduced with another Caucasian woman. Now, look at Blake Griffin's son's brothers. Look at his son. His son came out with blonde hair, just like his mother. But that little child goes all the way back to a dark-skinned Haitian man. Because you are the seed of your father. But this is why I mentioned with the whole Don Pedro situation. So now we're going to go back to Don Pedro. So, brothers... As you already know, the man to the left is John the Sixth of Portugal, King John the Sixth of Portugal. Now, in the middle is supposed to be his son Dom Pedro the First, but look at his son in the middle. As you can see, he's extremely light, but he still has that kinkyish hair. Now, I don't know if this is a mulatto situation where his mother is a Caucasian. I tried to find, I tried to do research on his mother. But I couldn't find any historical documentation of the skin complexion of his mother. But as you already know, all they're going to give us is fabricated whitewash versions. Or it could or it could quite possibly be that his mother was also dark. It's just that he came out extremely light. Because a lot of you brothers may be able to attest it attest to this. Some of you brothers may be the light skinned ones in your family, but both of your parents are dark. Or you may have other siblings that both are, um, that they're light skinned, but both of their parents are dark. Because this is why we have so much describing words used to describe the so-called black man and woman. And of course, to the far left will be Dom Pedro the second. But following the seed line, do you see how completely different, um, completely different he looks? It went from a dark skinned man from Dom Pedro the first. I mean, um, John the sixth of Portugal. To a lighter skin from Dom Pedro the first to a completely white, blonde haired, blue eyes Dom Pedro the second. This is why I stated it may be a Blake Griffin situation, but as I've stated, the confusion lies because I cannot find any historical documentation of the skin complexion of the mother of Dom Pedro the first and Dom Pedro the second. And I've also stated this may be a whitewash or the usurping of black rulership, so we're going to get that. So Don Pedro II, December 1825 to 5th of December 1891. Now brothers, isn't this the time period where so-called black people were on the rapid decline of their rulership? This is why I stated this is probably the Caucasian overthrow. And this probably wasn't the real Don Pedro II. This was a proxy. This was the usurper claiming the identity of Don Pedro II. But let's read but let's read on. Nicknamed the Magnanimous, was the second and last monarch of the Empire of Brazil. Now when you think of monarchy, you have to think of black rulership because so-called black people were the monarchs. So brothers, whenever you hear whenever you hear um the overthrow of the monarchs, understand that's called for overthrowing black rulership. So reigning for over 58 years, he was born in Rio de, Rio de Janeiro, the seventh child of Emperor Dom Pedro I of Brazil and Empress Dona Maria Leopoldina. And as I stated, I tried to do research on her, but I couldn't find any documentation about her skin complexion. And thus a member of the Brazilian branch of the House of Braganza. His, father abrupt, um, his father's abrupt abdication and departure to Europe in 1831 left the five-year-old as emperor and led to a grim and lonely childhood of adolescence, obliged to spend his time studying in the preparation for his rule. His experiences with court intrigues and political disputes during this period greatly affected his later character. He grew into a man with a strong sense of duty and devotion towards his country and his people yet increasingly resentful of his role as a monarch so with all of that being said brothers my gut feeling my gut feeling i think that this is the usurper the caucasian usurper overthrowing black rulership but as i've stated it could also be a case 
of the Blake Griffin syndrome where Dom Pedro II actually goes back to a so-called black man and he was the last monarch and that's where they got overthrew. So it was either during this time period or after, or after Pedro II where the blacks got overthrew. But as I've stated, there's so much confusion because these, these are the type of things that I have to sift through just to get to some form of truth because so much lies have been told and it's hard to time it's hard to tell from the like the 1800s which individual monarch who was the last so-called black ruling monarch but with all of that being said point being is this john the sixth king john the sixth of portugal was a so-called black man that was the main point of the video anyways